I'm Justin Mott, full-time photographer, like a user, former reality TV show host from a TV show that you've probably never heard of called Photo Face Off on History Channel Asia. I'm a wildlife photojournalist and assignment photographer. I've shot over 100 assignments for the New York Times around the world, and I own and operate my own commercial photography and video production business called Mott Visuals, based here in Vietnam and working globally. My channel is dedicated to all things photography from the perspective of a full-time working photographer. Today I'm going to talk about this little guy here, the cool cousin to the like the Ricoh GR3. I'm going to talk about why this camera has a cult following among street photographers, why I love this camera, how I use this camera, and why your second Leica camera should be a Ricoh. What do I possibly mean by that? Well, stay tuned to find out. <laughs> Talking about this to my Leica people out there, this really does also apply to other camera users as well. You can see some parallels in there, so don't leave if you're not a Leica person. There are many uses for this for you non-Leica people as well. You'll see. First things first, as usual, well not as usual, I've added some new items to my online store. I've added like a whole educational section. In addition to my one-on-one, -on -one, one hour sessions for $99, I offer a three session bundle package with three one hour sessions for $250, so you're saving 50 bucks right there. And the one I'm really excited about is my assignment package. This is like a mini personalized one-on-one -on -one workshop. It is $300 for three one hour sessions based over the course of three weeks and, and how it works is I give you a personalized assignment based on your level of photography and based on your interest in photography. So check that out. It's all available on my site. Also have a new black and white preset on there and a new bundle package for my presets. And as always, I still sell my prints for $99 with free shipping globally. Okay, what do I mean by your next Leica should be a Ricoh? How does that make any sense? Before I get into all that, I'm gonna tell you just some quick specs about this camera. First of all, it comes in at $900. It has a 24 megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor. It has an 18 millimeter 2.8 lens, the equivalent of a 28 millimeter lens on a full frame camera. It has a nice three inch touchscreen LCD screen. It does not have electronic viewfinder, but you can buy this really, really overpriced optical viewfinder here. I bought the official Ricoh one, the GV2, and it's ridiculously overpriced, but the way I like to shoot, I have to have it because I hate using an LCD screen to frame my pictures, I just do. So this little accessory here does not come with the camera and it has a price tag of $250, so it's ridiculously overpriced, but I'm sure you can find a aftermarket one a lot cheaper than this one here. It has another little interesting feature. It has two gigs of built-in storage, which actually does come in handy for those of you out there, not you, not me, but people that actually forget their memory cards sometimes, or if you just took this camera out and something went wrong with your memory card, has that built in, so you still could take a couple shots, and that may or may not have saved me in the past. I'm not gonna talk about that. It shoots video, but nothing really to mention there. I never use this camera for video. It's made out of magnesium alloy, and it does have a nice little rubber grip here, and the alloy does feel nice in your hands, but it does have plastic buttons on the back. The real genius of this camera, and why it has a cult following, and why I love this camera, is its compact size. Just look at the size of this little guy here. Just look at it actually next to the Leica Q2 here. Now, Leica Q2 is small is lightweight, but just look at that size difference. This camera is going to fit in your pocket. This one isn't. For some people that matters, for some it doesn't. But I like that this can fit in my coat pocket. I like it can fit in my jeans pocket because I'm not a skinny jeans kind of guy. In addition to its small size, it also doesn't weigh a lot either. It comes in at nine ounces, so when you have this camera on you or in your bag, you barely feel it. It just feels like having like a wallet on you. So why does just a simple camera like this that's not action-packed with features have such a cult following among street photographers? Well, first and foremost, it's that size and that feel. The rubber grip, the magnesium alloy, it just really feels nice in your hand. It's really kind of easy to hide. It's smaller than the palm of your hand. You can put it away easy. You can take it out easy. You don't need a like camera strap. You don't even need to hang it on your neck. You can just have it in your hand. It's really that simple. It feels really, really nice. It's extremely discreet, 
But not just that, the performance on this camera for what you get for $900 is really exceptional. The files out of this camera are absolutely delicious. And the built-in lens that it comes with is exceptional, again, for that price. It's just something you don't normally find on these compact cameras. Typically, they have a zoom lens that comes out really far. You know, it's got one of those like zoom erections when it comes out, which I just don't like. And a lot of street photographers like fixed lenses. When this thing comes out, it's small, as you can see. It just barely comes out the front here. So it's a fixed lens. It's really, really discreet. And it just has great quality files for the price. I've used this camera on professional assignments. I've had images from this camera published in the New York Times and in the Washington Post, even occasionally on my personal project, Kendrick Gardens, which I'll tell you how I use that a little bit later. So in addition to the size being discreet, the shutter's really discreet as well. You can barely hear it when it shoots. And you can set the audio levels for those of you that want to hear it a little bit more or people that don't want to hear it at all. You can set that in camera. Now, I'm not going to say the aesthetic, the build quality, or even the quality of the files or the quality of the lens comes anywhere close to the Leica Q2 or the Leica M10 or even the Leica SL. It doesn't. But the quality is really good for $900. It is exceptional for $900. And that's why people really, really like this camera. So now, what say you about your second Leica should be a Ricoh? What do you mean by that? How dare you speak that blasphemy? How dare you say this camera even belongs in the same camera bag or even in the presence of other Leica cameras? Well. Hear me out. Now, I'm not going as far to say that this camera should replace any Leica cameras or that it could possibly replace any cameras in the Leica system, but rather it can complement them. As I've seen in the comments section after my last episode about which Leica system is best for you, you can check that out here. I notice a lot of you out there have like an army of Leica cameras. Like really, I have a few, but some of you out there, you have like a whole platoon. Now before any of you go out and buy your second Leica or just buy more Leicas, I wanna tell you how I use this camera and maybe you can find a way to use it as well instead of buying two or three cameras and spending tens of thousands of dollars. So when I first bought my beloved Leica M10D, as many of you know, that is my favorite camera, that is my go-to camera for my assignment work and my personal project work. But when I first bought that camera, I still needed a backup. I'm a professional photographer so if I go out an assignment, I need to have a backup camera. Often I am working in remote locations, so if something goes wrong, I'd be screwed if I didn't have another camera to get me through at least the day. And things do go wrong. So not just the camera going wrong, but there can be human error as well. I've had a couple situations where I could have gone down and easily ruined my camera, so it's always good to have a backup with you. I was photographing orphaned elephants at a sanctuary in Nairobi, and I made the stupid mistake of getting between a orphaned elephant and the feeding time where they hand feed them milk and I almost got trampled. Yes, it was a baby elephant, but if you've seen a baby elephant, they're still much larger than I am and it could have gone a lot worse. Luckily, last minute I got out of the way. And that's just another little tip for you guys out there. You always get some good value with me like you get with this camera. Don't get in between a elephant and their milk. It's a nice little tip for you. Remember that. Sure, you could say, well, just buy a second Leica M10D, but I don't shoot often with two cameras simultaneously. Now, spending eight to $9,000 on a backup camera that I'm rarely going to use just seemed like a waste of money for me at the time. And it also offered a couple things my M10D doesn't. Now, most of the time I don't need the screen on my Leica M10D and I don't need autofocus. That's why I bought the camera. But every once in a while it has come in handy. Another nice little thing about this camera, it does have built-in macro. Now, it's not an amazing macro lens, but it can come in handy when I need to get those really close shots. Maybe some details on the animals I'm photographing, maybe some details for a travel story I'm photographing. So it has come in handy there. A couple other ways I've used this to complement the M10D when I really needed autofocus because I was shooting through a fence and it was really hard to like get that focus right or just really, really tricky lighting conditions. I was photographing pangolins, not penguins, but pangolins doing a story about a pangolin rescue center in Vietnam and pangolins are nocturnal and I needed to shoot in a really tricky lighting situation again through this fence and the light was tricky. So this really did come in handy in that situation. Another way I've used this camera to complement my M10D is in shooting in really bad conditions. The M10D is not weather sealed, so I don't really want to risk it. Yes, I've shot it in light rain and that's okay, but sometimes I really do need to shoot in heavy rain. So rather than risk the $8,000 camera, I decided to risk the $900 camera instead. So it did come in handy in that situation as well. So that's one way I use the Ricoh, but there are many, many more 
ways. I'm not done yet. Let's say, for example, you're an SL shooter. You like a camera that has high performance professional features. You want that deep customizable menu. You want that lightning fast autofocus. You want a camera with high frames per second, but every once in a while you like to slow down and shoot street. But you don't do it enough to justify spending over $5,000 on something like the Leica Q or spending eight to $9,000 on a Leica M10, that's where this camera can come in handy. Spending $900 is not nearly as much of a commitment for something that you do part-time. And again, like I mentioned, this camera does perform very, very well for the price. And I know the Leica SL can be used for street photography as well, especially people out there that like to use the adapter and attach your M lenses and go out and shoot. But still, that camera is a weight commitment and it's not nearly as discreet as this. So if you wanna go out a little bit more lightweight, you wanna go out a little bit more discreet, this camera really does the job well for those type of people. Or how about you part-time black and white people that are thinking about maybe investing in an M monochrome or a Q monochrome, but maybe you're on the fence because you only like to shoot black and white sometimes. You have like a Leica M10 and you're thinking about a backup Q monochrome or an M monochrome just to have something different, but tough call because that's another 5,000 or another $8,000 and really, you don't know if you're gonna do it enough. That's another beauty of this camera. Now, I'm not a big fan, typically, of using built-in filters in cameras, but I really, really dig the high contrast black and white filter that comes with this camera built in, and that's how I use this camera. I often go out and use this as my dedicated black and white camera. I set the filter to black and white high contrast, and I go out and shoot, and this is my dedicated black and white camera, and I can see it in real time. I'm not saying it compares to the beautiful files you're gonna get on a dedicated monochrome sensor like you do with the Leicas. But for those of you that do it part-time and can't justify the cost of a brand new dedicated monochrome camera, this is a nice alternative to that. So that's another reason, but wait, I've got more. Another situation where this camera comes in handy is for people that are shy or for people that do really investigative work. I know a lot of you are shy about approaching people on the street and this camera can help you get closer in a more discreet way. It's tiny. When people are holding this, they don't think of you as a photographer. So it's easy to get close, easy to hide when you need to. It's easy to just kind of shoot on the fly. Like, you know, one of these, the little look that way, shoot that way, or shoot from the hip or under the arm or around the back, like it's just very discreet and easy to hide. It also works well for people that do investigative work. I know that's not a lot of you out there. If you do investigative work and you're in a position where you really, really need to hide or pretend like you don't have a camera on you, this can take professional quality pictures in a pinch. So in the past, I've gone undercover to do a story for Time Magazine and the UN. I had to go undercover to pose as a potential buyer at a mafia dealer's home who was selling tiger bones and rhino horns and things like that. So I didn't have this camera at the time, but it would have come in handy. I had a bigger SLR and yes, I still did get the shot, but it really was dangerous and really was tricky to pull out a full size digital SLR and pretend that I wasn't a photographer. So at the time, this would have been a better choice, but I wasn't aware of this camera at that time. And lastly, another weird way I use it, a very niche way that I use this camera is as a cycling camera. So instead of street photography, I do saddle photography. And yes, I invented the genre. And since I invented the genre and I'm claiming to be the only one who does it, I am the best saddle photographer in the world at this moment, but no, I like to go out on long road rides. For those of you that have followed me for a long time, maybe you've seen the weight loss. I've dropped about 20 kilos since January, and that's all because I've been cycling a lot. I used to cycle when I was younger, got fat, and now I'm back to cycling again, and I absolutely love it. Now I'm locked down, I'm constantly cycling on my trainer. When I do get to go out, Vietnam is a beautiful place to ride. I live in Hanoi, I live in the city, but I make my way out to the countryside. And for any of you that have traveled to Vietnam, you know that is an extremely visual country. That's a huge reason why I live here. Every day there's something different to photograph. You never know what's gonna pop up on the street. And I like to take this camera with me because I want a dedicated camera. And because I know the iPhone is good, but this easily outperforms the iPhone in many different ways. And also I just like the grip. I can keep it in my jersey. I take it out on the fly while I'm riding. If I see something interesting, I'm ready to go. I preset the focus. I have it in black and white. Cause again, that's how I use this. I use this mainly as 
use my faux monochrome camera and I just kind of shoot in the fly. Every once in a while I stop, but I don't like to stop often because I do go out with the first intention to get exercise and to get in a rhythm, but things do pop up all the time. I'm constantly going through these small villages and all of a sudden I've got to navigate my way through a man herding a bunch of water buffalo or there's something interesting on the side of the street and I can just be ready to go really, really quickly. So for those of you that like to cycle, I know that's a random thing to say about a camera. This actually works quite well for that. And now I wouldn't be doing my job as a photographer if I didn't complain about something. I mean, as photographers, we're supposed to complain about everything. Every time a camera comes out, we're supposed to complain that it doesn't have X, Y, and Z. So I'm gonna do my light complaining about this camera. But as you know by now, I really, really dig this camera. So a couple things to complain about. The autofocus in low light is not fantastic. In normal, Right, daylight it's great it's fine it does the job well in low light it does really swim a lot so for some of you that like to shoot low light street photography that might be a deal breaker that might be reason enough for you not to buy this camera one workaround is that they do have a snap focus feature on this camera so you can go in camera and preset your focal distance. So if you don't mind working that way, that's a nice workaround. I do wish on the next version of this camera, they would have a manual focus feature. That would be really nice. The next thing is the app is horrible on this camera. I haven't used it recently to be fair, but in the past when I first tried it, I just stopped using it because I couldn't get it to work. And while that's not normally something I care about, the way I like to use this camera that is important to me, this is the kind of camera that I like to take out when I go for a walk, when I go to a new city, I like to wander around and just have a camera on me all day and then during bad light I like to take a break have a coffee have a beer and then go out and shoot some more and then take a break and have a coffee or a beer and like repeat that cycle it's just something I like to do it's the way I like to shoot and during those break times rather than looking through the screen sometimes I like to upload those to my phone and share it with family and friends or upload it to social media so I wish it was better I wish it functioned again more like the Leica app another complaint is yes that overpriced viewfinder that attaches on the top I just don't feel like it should be $250 I feel like it should be like 50 bucks, but again, I bought it, so they were right, I was wrong, but I think you can also find an aftermarket one much cheaper. Another gripe about this camera is the battery life is pretty horrific and take about 200 pictures per battery. A workaround for that is this expensive viewfinder. You could turn the screen off and use the viewfinder and get a lot more out of the battery life. And another workaround is it does have a USB charging port. So if you do go out for the day and you do like to carry a power brick, you can get a charge out of it that way. I would recommend if you're gonna go out and shoot for a full day, you're gonna need about three to four batteries on this camera, especially if you shoot a lot. As far as overall design and build quality, while I like the magnesium alloy and I like the rubber grip here and I like the way it does feel in your hand and up to your eye and I love how lightweight it is I don't love the plastic buttons on the back I do wish they took the full plunge in making this like a real street photography camera and just made the essentials more prominent and more tactile like the aperture button and the shutter button and the ISO button I wish they borrowed some of those design features over from the Leica system and adapted them to this little guy here so to recap you can see this is an extremely versatile camera full disclosure I ended up investing in a used Leica M10 as my backup camera to my Leica M10D just because I wanted a more fluid system, but I still get a lot of use out of this camera. I use it for different situations all the time, and it really does complement my Leica system well. Again, sometimes I don't want to go out with my two M10 bodies just because of having all that value in one bag. Sometimes I don't want to go out with two M10 bodies just because I want something a little bit lighter. Sometimes I want to go out with just one camera that can fit into my pocket, and that's where this comes in handy. But for a lot of you guys out there, there's so many different ways that this can fit into your Leica a system or you're like an army as I know many of you have and it can save you a lot of money in the process like some of the ways I mentioned like for those of you that have a performance SL camera but you like to do street photography on the side but you don't do it enough to justify the purchase of a Q2 or an M camera or just for some of you that are interested in a dedicated black and white camera but don't want to go full on and invest in a monochrome system this can come in handy that way there's just so many different uses to this camera again it's not meant to replace any of your Leica cameras but it is meant to complement many of your Leica cameras. The way I like to think about this Ricoh GR3 is it's not an immediate family member to the Leica, but it's like a distant cousin that you like to hang out with, that when he or she's in town, you want to meet up, you want to have a beer with that person. That's how I see the GR3. Let me know how you see the Ricoh GR3, and if you think it could fit into your Leica family or not, let me know in the comments section. Thank you guys for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.